sex before you marry is a bad idea. Don't tell me there's no such thing as gun violence. That just depends on your definition of when life begins. There are problems of sin and habit that cannot be solved outside the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Faith vs. Culture right here on the CBN News Channel. My name is Dan Andros. I'm the managing editor over at faithwire.com. I'm joined, as always, by author and pastor Dale Partridge. Dale, what's going on? Hey, brother. Yeah, lots to talk about always in uh, the culture in terms of how it relates to uh, the fall of our moral status as a society as well as the church. And um, it seems like we've just ramped up, Dan, with constant... Uh, topics of discussion, and it's like it's not getting any slower. It's just getting faster and more yeah. and greater, and there's just more uh, things that we would have even looked at maybe six months ago as being outrageous are now becoming commonplace. And so, yeah, lots of discussion. The, the, when this stuff happens, it requires Christians to have more clarity on the scriptures because they're exercising their sense of right and wrong on a more uh, extreme level and yeah. at a more frequent pace. And uh, there's so much, I guess, uh, deception out there right now that we need to be clear on scripture so that we can evaluate rightly uh, what's happening and how do we deal with these things. So yeah, lots to talk about and excited to have that conversation today. Yeah, and as you said, the anger is just boiling up. And uh, man, you just see people have, uh, you know, whether they're believers or not, they're certainly tempted to buy into the ideas that culture is selling them. And I think a lot of the ideas that culture is selling really breed hopelessness. And um, when you don't pin your hope in Christ fully, when you don't uh, build the foundation of your worldview on the rock, on the solid ground of Christ and the Word of God, you are going to be susceptible to these things. And and I'm I'm getting tired of seeing it, Dale. I'm just going to be honest. It, you know, it's 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 getting kind of frustrating just watching people, um, you know, fold uh, as really bullies and uh, you know uh, people who just uh, honestly just uh, you know are just so fearful and afraid. Um, of the things they see coming, they're so fearful about you know another term for Trump or or Biden or whatever the case may be, and uh, you just see this fear, and there's so many so much fear just driving these decisions, and I think that comes from a lack of faith. And actually, uh, in an interview here on CBN with uh, Governor Christy Noem from uh, South Dakota, she said the same thing uh, that that when she was on that conference call earlier on in the uh, pandemic, she sensed the fear in these governors that, and she attributed that to a lack of faith. And so I agree with that sentiment. I think a lack of faith breeds fear. And as Christians, we have to be uh, doubling down on that solid rock that of God, that foundation, uh, so that we can be a light and we can be showing people uh, the way to, um, you know, peace and uh, ultimately unity, getting along, because that is something that is just wildly missing today. Yeah, what we're having, uh, we're reaping the, the um, what we sowed, I should say. The fruit on the tree is a result of the roots that uh, we are um, clinging to. And I would say as society and as a church, we have spent many, many decades uh, making faith very thin. Uh, it was very, it's a veneer. We didn't get deep into the doctrine of God. We don't understand the sovereignty of God. We don't understand the deep mechanics of the gospel. We can barely even explain the gospel to another person. Um, I think the statistics were, and I could be getting this slightly wrong, but I, I believe it's it's less than 10% of Christians share the gospel with another person uh, on an annual basis. Um, and so we're seeing that all of these things that we've been sowing for so many decades in the church of this emotional, religious, therapeutic moralism that we've, uh, you know, that we've bred and groomed into the church, 
uh, isn't sustainable in a uh, trialsome, complex, philosophical, moral, ideological, social, theological you know, issues that we're facing today. We don't have the right answers. And I think this is, you know, th- we talked about this before in the show, the greatest commandment, the first and great commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And I think we've abandoned that last category of loving the Lord with your mind. And we have such, again, a thin gospel that we can't uh, respond properly to the things that are presented to us in reality uh, because our our understanding of who God is and our understanding of who we are is so shallow. We, we don't understand the deep things of God because we haven't taken the time to study them. We've been in pursuit of prosperity. We've been in pursuit of comfort. We've been in pursuit of pleasure. We have not been in pursuit of holiness and, and reverence and devotion. And it's beginning to show. It's beginning to show uh, not just in the, the culture at large, but also the church at large. And it's causing those who are truly his to dive deep into the scripture and to understand the complexities and how do I view this reality. Um, and it's causing those who were in the church that were actually have never came to Christ. And that's m- many, many souls have come to church without coming to Christ. And it's ejecting those people out of the church because they can't possibly deal with uh, their emotions um, and and the scriptures. There's a there's a clash. There's a conflict, and I, I think of a quote that Vodi Bakum said. He said, "We're not seeing terrible things in our culture because we vote the wrong way. We are seeing terrible things in our culture because men love darkness rather than light, um, and that's the root issue right now that we're dealing with. Is what's going on in the world uh, with." the uh, political landscape, what's going on in the world with the moral landscape. We just saw that California passed that it's no longer a felony to sleep with a minor. Uh, it, it, we, we see that at the wake uh, of, of all these celebrities about to be uh, in trouble because there's re- revelation and news coming out that they have potentially had uh, sexual relations with minors. And so there's, a, there's just some evil things that are happening right now and it's not because we voted incorrectly um that there's there's a there's sure there's a there's a correlation there uh but the root of it is uh, these things are happening because men love darkness rather than light and that, that's a, a scripture quotation coming straight out of the book of john chapter three and so um we need to realize what's really going on and the manifestation of evil is growing and uh, we can have hope, though, because light always wins over darkness. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think it also underscores, Dale, that uh, worldviews have consequences. Now, that doesn't mean if you're a Christian, you're going to be perfect and you're not going to have any sin. Far from it. That's that's not why I bring that up. But why I bring that up is that um, the way you view the world is a lot of times going to dictate how you behave. And um, we have to, as you said, see the world for as it is, as Vadi said there as well, um, that these are sin problems first and foremost, because what happens is so many times we see people, you know, looking around and we're, the, the race problem, for example, um, the race issues that are happening, that is ultimately a sin problem, the sin of partiality and, um, you know, all kinds of different sins can come into, in, into that as well. Um, and, uh, you know, pride, et cetera, lots of different things. And, um, but, but what happens is we're not viewing that as sin. We're not, you know, we're not, we're saying, well, here's another solution over here. We're saying, you know what, this is a problem over here. We need to ad- adopt this system. And, you know, cause white people think this and black people that like, I think that's going down the completely wrong road. Not that there's no valuable information out there outside, uh, you know, of scripture. I don't believe that. Uh, but I think the primary problem is the sin problem. And when we're not looking at the root of that and trying to weed that out, you know, we're just, we're essentially just, you know, barking up the wrong tree. Yeah. I mean, at the root is that um, we're in bondage to sin if you're not in bondage to Christ. Uh, mm-hmm. And this is, this is the reality is that our soul um, come the fall, you know, with Adam and Eve, um, they were, sinless but they weren't perfect and they weren't perfect because they had the opportunity to sin if you were perfect you wouldn't have the opportunity to sin when they fell into sin they were only capable of sinning it's like 
cancer. Once it enters in, you have cancer. And their, their will, you know, people think that we have free will. I go, well, you don't have a free will. You have a will. Um, and it's in bondage to something. And the Bible teaches that your will is in, is in bondage to sin. It mm-hmm. all, if you were given a thousand opportunities to choose, uh, you know, to choose to, to give yourself up to the Lord and let him do it, let him lead you and, and, and do only good things, you wouldn't do it. Um, we are selfish. We are self-seekers. We are evil and wicked on the inside of our, our souls. And that, that has reigned true, as we've seen here, is that we're only capable of doing evil, and it's because of the sin that's deep in our heart. Christ comes, and he now enables, by the power of the Holy Spirit, for our will to be in bondage to him. Now, we're still in a fallen flesh, which means that we still sin. Um, but we are not in bondage to sin. And there's a quote from, I think, Thomas Watson, the great Puritan writer, and he says, uh, while uh, sin still remains in the born-again Christian, sin does not reign. Um, and that's the difference between the the person that without Christ is that sin is reigning in their heart is what the Bible teaches versus in Christ or in a Christian is that sin is not reigning. The Holy Spirit is reigning and it's dictating and guiding and it's being sanctified and you're being made more like Christ over the years. Um, and that's what we have to realize is going on. We need to be preaching the gospel because it's the only path forward for a reformation of morality. Uh, sure. Do we need to deal with the discussions before that? Absolutely. It doesn't mean that we don't talk about abortion. It doesn't mean that we don't talk about marriage. It doesn't mean that we don't talk about race. Those things need to happen. But at the root level, at the very bottom, at the very going down deep, the seed, that needs to be dealt with at some point. And, and that, the only way we get to do that is with the gospel. That's absolutely right. And um, I think at the end of the day, we've got to answer, do we really believe it when we say God is the answer? Do we really believe it? Do we, when push comes to shove, do we put our money where our mouth is and pitch that as the first answer? So uh, we got to take a break here. Uh, we'll dive into this some more because there's a lot to cover. We'll be back on the other side of the break. This is Faith versus Culture. thing is gun violence. That just depends on your definition of when life begins. Watch Dan and Dale tackle trending topics that test your faith on the next Faith Wire, Monday night at 9.30. The Global Lane takes you around the world providing facts over fiction. What might rising trade and geopolitical tensions mean for you on the home front? With over 45 years of experience, award-winning journalist Gary Lane brings you the truth from a global angle. What about the issue of immigration? World news analysis you won't see anywhere else. And it's all right here on The Global Lane. Watch The Global Lane, Thursday night at 9.30. This episode of Faith versus Culture. This is the CBN News Channel. Dan Andros here, Dale Partridge there. Uh, we were just talking about uh, the society going crazy <laughs> and protests and riots, and man, everything seems wild. And so, how do we filter this through a Christian perspective? How do we respond as Christians? How do we react to all of this? How do we deal with it? Uh, so that's what we've been talking about here. And uh, uh, Dale, let's let's start off with this uh, quote from uh, Stephen Lawson. 
Uh, there's a tweet it says the death of any society begins with its abandonment of God. From there, it descends into the devaluing of human life and the destruction of the family, religious freedom and civil decency. Man, I hate checking off all those boxes as I'm reading it, but it sure feels like that a large part of society has done pretty much all of those things. When you look at the unborn, um, you look at, I mean, the, what they're defining as family now. Um, religious freedoms, obviously there's many issues we've covered there. Um, and civil decency is out the window now with everyone just yelling at each other. If you don't agree and throwing stuff and shooting at each other and everything else. So, um, yeah, where do you want to go with that one? Yeah. I mean, it's such a summarization of reality that it's sad. Um, yeah, you know, I'm reading it over here. The death of any society begins with its abandonment of God. I mean, we have to realize that death is is uh, not always instant, right? Um, this is the reality that that Adam and Eve dealt with. They 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 took a bite, um, and they didn't die immediately. They didn't understand that it wasn't an immediate thing, right? They they thought that it was something that, oh, maybe God, you know, misled us, or or, or I, I'm not going to believe it, right? Because the serpent says you're not going to you're not going to die. Well, you're going to die eventually because we know the wages of sin is death, and eventually you die. And that's the thing what Lawson, I believe, here is talking about. The death of any society begins with its abandonment of God. And, and so, sure, we, we might not specifically be dead right now, but, but what's happening to this nation is that, is that we are dying. We're, we're not sustaining and we're not improving. And I would say that's, uh, you know, there's a bigger philosophical discussion there. But we're, we're definitely we're definitely going downward um, in, in this specific moment of time. It's a, he says, from there, it descends into the devaluing of human life. Well, of course it does, right? Of course it does. Because if we're not created, then we have no intrinsic value. And if we have no intrinsic value, then there's no objective truth and there's no objective reality, which means there's no for sure true and for sure false. And so there's no way that you can ever say that don't hit me, that hurts. Or don't take that from me because it's mine. Or don't kill my son. You can't say those things because there's no right or wrong. Um, th if God's gone, the absence of, of God is, you know, God is love. And so love is gone. And, and th everything falls apart. It just crumbles. But it takes a logical thinker. It takes a philosophical student. It takes someone who is willing to sit and look carefully at these truths, not just where they start, but where they end. What is the logical conclusion of removing God? Um, and God reveals himself in that, that society unravels. And um, yeah, from here, it descends into the devaluing of human life, which we are seeing, absolutely. People kill their babies because they don't think it's murder, because they don't think the baby actually was alive. Yeah. And they don't think it was alive because it hasn't been given life for what is life. And, and these are big questions. Um, yeah. And the destruction of the family. We're, we're there now. We're, we're dealing with the destruction of uh, male-female uh, traditional marriage, um, you know, how that should work with... There's now multiple parents involved in a thing and and <laughs> gender is confused and religious freedom now is getting attacked, which is the next thing on his list. And why would religious freedom be attacked? Well, because they're actually now condemning those people that don't believe in God and, and anything that the Bible says is now hate speech. Yeah. And so we become the enemy. And then uh, civil decency as a result of the Christians moving away, God restrains evil through the presence of the church. Take away all of the Christians out of the world and the evil is left to itself. It would destroy itself in terms of just everything would be gross. Think about every hospital that is started by, you know, St. Mary's and St. Jude's and, you know, and St. Charles. And, all, all, you know, these are all hospitals built upon the goodness of God. You remove those things, all the humanitarian organizations, everything pulls away and evil is left to itself and decency is gone. And this yeah. is exactly a, a, a beautiful little tweet, but with huge implications. Yeah, and I think it's really it's really key, Dale, that you touched on a bunch of things there. But uh, one of those is that um, when you remove God, um, everything. This is why it's important. People think, oh, you're just arguing like semantics, and you know, because well, everyone agrees, you know, murder is wrong and everything else. Well, yeah, people are wired with God's values on their hearts. That you know, we we kind of intrinsically know most of the things that are right and wrong. There's a you know, we we all know we're made in the image of God. You know, deep down, we know this. 
So we overlap on some of those things. They can look at it and agree with the Christian. Yeah, well, that life is valuable, of course. But when you remove the justification for that, what happens is now your Venn diagram can start venturing into all kinds of things. Well, these, these lives, you know, people in the, in the womb, those don't matter because they're not born yet. Well, now you've just made up your own arbitrary thing. So now it's just whatever the society deems is right and wrong. When you remove God, that's what can happen. And so that's how you can see people justifying violence in the streets and saying, well, that's right, because they, you know, now they're just arbitrarily choosing what's right and what's wrong. So that is the implication when you remove God from, from the situation. What you're doing is you're removing any you know, semblance of responsibility because you're just pretending he's not there and you're making up your own rules. So it's a very dangerous yeah. path that we are going down. Um, and I would encourage everybody to double down on their foundation uh, of their worldview. But we got to wrap it up, Dale. So we're going to we have enough time for one more segment here to, to to go ahead and wrap this thing up. And we'll do that on the other side of the break. This is Faith versus Culture. Want to be a part of a community that inspires your spiritual growth while winning prizes? The all-new MyCBN app. Connect with the community for prayer and encouragement. Track and set spiritual goals. Enjoy conversation starters with friends and family. And collect points to win prizes. The all-new MyCBN app. A great place to belong. Download the app at cbn.com slash mobile. Grow. Connect. Have fun. The all-new MyCBN app. On the home front. Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Home Front, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. CBN honors the men and women in our military with an initiative called Helping the Home Front. It partners with churches across the country to meet the needs of their military families, from repairing homes to wiping out medical bills for wounded veterans. Watch On the Home Front today at 2:30. Often we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. All right, we are back. This is Faith versus Culture. Dan Andros here, Dale Partridge there. Don't forget, before we go any further, you can reach us by just simply emailing contact at faithwire.com. All right, we've been talking about this consensus morality. Basically, whatever society deems is correct is what goes. So what's your reaction to that, Dale? Yeah, we're at a place now where if we don't have guiding principles of Scripture that are objective, universal truths, we find ourselves in a situation where we need to define morality by whoever has the biggest group who believes the certain thing. And that's what we're doing basically today is we have parties that, you know, believe certain things and they get to define morality based off of how big their crowd is. Um, and sadly, you know, when this devolves from uh, objective truth into emotional truth of uh, the consensus, we get ourselves in a situation where basically the only two guiding principles for what is right and wrong are pain and pleasure. So if it's painful, it's wrong. Um, and if it's pleasurable, it's right. Well, we know that there's so much overlap in, you know, to somebody, they might view pleasure of a 56-year-old man sleeping with a 12-year-old girl. It might be pleasurable to him, um, uh, incorrectly pleasurable to him. Um, and you, now we have a California state saying, well, if it's consensual or whatever their, their law describes, uh, then it's not actually wrong. Um, and so we, we get ourselves in a situation, which we are now, 
of of building uh, upon that that reality. Um, the you know the only way it can devolve any lower than that is because we start treating ourselves like animals. Um, you know, and people are already saying this that we're no different than animals, right? We're just we're we're just mammals, right? And I go, well, that's that that can't be true because you know, uh, am- animals fight on instinct, right? There's no there's nothing wrong with a lion killing a, a sheep, nothing at all, right? Um, and so you you know, if we're gonna act like animals, then how can you say that it's wrong that I kill a certain person? Um, and so there's just so much going on when you devolve from an objective truth from God down into what we're dealing with today. So study your philosophy, study logic, uh, study religion, really get into the the deeper uh, teachers of these things. Read the Puritans, um, re- read uh, books on argument. Um, this is the core, I think, of our society and the Christian church today. We need to educate ourselves on these realities. All right, great stuff. And that is all the time we have for this segment. We are gonna take a quick break. And we'll be back to wrap it up on the other side of the break. This is Faith versus Culture. Back in a second. Are you suffering from feeling tired or worn out during the day? Can you not turn off your brain at night? You are not alone. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the Sleep Doctor, and I've partnered with the Christian Broadcasting Network, and we're going to bring you some unbelievable information that you can use tonight to get a better night's rest. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com to get your free copy of Protect Your Sleep today. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living, Tuesday night at 9.30. Woohoo! Hi, Superbook fans. Here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> It's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Whoa! No super balls, man. Come and... Sorry, pardon me. Sorry, excuse me. Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! (sighs) Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. All right, that's all the time we have for today. As always, you can find us on your favorite social media channels. Go ahead and follow us there. Look for Faith versus Culture uh, with Dan Andros and Dale Hartridge. So thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Have a great week.